Welcome back. We now have a good idea of units, their importance, why we need to use them. We also understand how to put stuff in our calculator and how to do some algebraic manipulations that we're going to be doing in this class. So our next thing is to understand a little bit about how we use our numbers in science. And one of the things that people often run across when they do numbers in science is there's a lot of different ways that scientists write numbers. They sometimes use this thing called scientific notation. They sometimes use prefixes. They sometimes write it out in different ways. And it seems counterintuitive that there's all these different ways of writing down numbers. And what I'm going to tell you is all those different ways are actually ways of making our life easier, not of making our life harder. Trust me that scientists don't just sit around all day thinking, how can we make people's lives harder? It's actually quite the opposite. So all of these numbers and all these different ways that we're going to talk about how to write numbers are ways to make it easier for us. So <clears throat> let's think of an example. So if I say, hey, why don't you picture stacking 12 soda cans together? Most of you can do that. You can be like, OK, I can picture a little pyramid. You put a few on the bottom, you stack them up, great. And, but if I tell you, can you picture, I don't know, 1,847,963 soda cans piled up on top of each other? You might get a picture in your head of just this large pile of soda cans, but it really probably is not an accurate picture of exactly how many that would be given the number that I gave you. It's just this giant pile. So it turns out that our brains are fantastic at picturing numbers between 1 and 10. Really good at picturing numbers between 1 and 100, and pretty good at picturing numbers between 1 and 1,000. And so what we do is we have all these different ways of writing numbers in science so that we can deal with numbers between 1 and 1,000 that we're really good at, while at the same time preserving very large numbers. So if we've got you know, 20 billion, we can turn that into a number that's between 1 and 10, actually, and, and think about that number between 1 and 10, and then say, hey, it's this big by using what we call scientific notation, which we'll see in just a bit. So all of these schemes that we're going to be talking about are actually ways of making writing numbers easier, not of making them harder. So let's go to our galaxy right here. I have no idea where we are in the galaxy. I don't remember, but we're this little tiny dot in this enormous galaxy. In fact, if you want to know how big the galaxy is, it is this many meters long. Wow, that's a huge number. And if you were to count out, and you'd have to count out all those zeros, you would find that there are <coughs> Oh, there's a 17 zeros there. There's a lot of zeros at the end of that number. But let's say that you wanted to compare it to another galaxy, and another galaxy was 4, 3, 3, 0, 0, 0. Right. If you wanted to compare those two, you'd have to go out and count the zeros in one galaxy, count the zeros in another galaxy, make sure that they're the same number of zeros at the end so that you're really comparing similar numbers. And if there's not, that would tell you something. But it would take a lot of time. Now imagine if you did that for a living. Wow, if you dealt with those kind of numbers every day, you'd really want a way of making writing those numbers a little more simple. So you wouldn't have to count out zeros, so comparing numbers would be easier. And lo and behold, there is a way of writing it called scientific notation that says, hey, let's take this really big number here, 946000, and what we're going to do is we're going to parse it into two pieces. One are the numbers we care about, this 946. Because if you notice, the rest of them are just zeros. So the 946, we're going to put down here, and we're going to make it a number between 1 and 10. Proper scientific notation is always numbers between 1 and 10. So we're going to make it a number between 1 and 10, 9.46. And then we're going to say times 10 to the 19th. Now, if you remember what 10 to the 19th means, it means 10 times 10 times 10, 19 times. So if I take 9.46 and I multiply it by 10, I get 94.6. If I take 94.6 and I multiply it by 10, I get 946. And then if I multiply that by 10 again, by 10 again, by 10 again, 19 times, I get this big giant number up here. And so scientific notation is not changing our number at all. It is the exact same number. It's just changing how we write it so that it's easier and quicker to look at. I have this thing in front which tells me about the important numbers, and I have this thing in back that tells me about how big it is. 10 to the 19th says, hey, multiply this by 10 19 times. This is a very large number, folks. If it was like times 10 to the 2, it would say, you know, this number's got some size to it, but not as big as 10 to the 19th. A very quick way of comparing numbers. 
So in scientific notation, these two form these two pieces have names, and they are the numbers in front are called either the coefficient or the mantissa. I'll use both terms here and there. And the numbers in back, the times 10 to the something, is called the exponent. <coughs> and scientific notation is always made up of a coefficient and an exponent. Let's look at a few examples up here. Here we've got the number 384 with a bunch of zeros after it. And again, we'd have to count the zeros every time if we wanted to look at that number. And if we wanted to compare it to another number, we'd have to count the zeros in that number and then compare the numbers. But here in scientific notation, I've got some numbers and I've got a size. And if I say, hey, compare this to 4.14 times 10 to the eighth, then you'd be like, oh, OK, I can compare those numbers that 4.14 is bigger than 3.84. They got the same number of zeros afterwards, and so I'm good. Whereas if I said compare this to 10 to the 11th, you'd be like, hey, well, the 10 to the 11th, that's just a much bigger number without having to count any zeros. So that's the point of scientific notation. We can also represent small numbers in scientific notation. So here we have 0 0.0000578, and we put that into 5.78 times 10 to the minus 7th. You'll remember that that minus exponent there does not mean we have a negative number. It just means that we're dividing by 10 seven times. So we take 5.78, we divide by 10, we divide by 10, we divide by 10, we divide by 10. Do that seven times, and you'll get this number right here. So we're not changing the number itself. We're just changing how we're writing it. You can see there's another couple examples shown there of different numbers and the ways we can write them. So what we need to do next, we need to learn how we're going to write numbers in scientific notation. And there's two different kind of things that we have to look at. One is for large numbers, one is for small numbers. And what I mean by large is something greater than one. So we're going to take for large numbers 3,829. And if you write it large, does that make it a large number? Whee! OK, so we're going to take 3,829. The first thing we want to do is find the decimal point. Where's the decimal point in here? Well, in some numbers, it's pretty easy, right? You say 382.9, then yay, it's right there. But in numbers without a decimal point, it's at the end, right there. So there's an implicit decimal point. So I'm going to take 3,829. What I want to do is I want to write that in a way that's equivalent using scientific notation. So I'm going to do it step by step for the first time we do it. And then after that, we'll kind of do it in a more uh, quick and systematic way. So I'm going to take that decimal point, I'm just going to move it over one spot, and I'm going to get 382.9. Now, are those two numbers the same? Is 3,829 the same as 382.9? And the answer is no. They're the exact same numbers, right? But the moving that decimal point changed my value. If you had $3,800 in the bank one day, $382 in the bank the next day, you'd be like, hey, bank, you made a mistake somewhere. Please fix that. And how they would fix that is they would multiply by 10, because 382.9 times 10 is 3,829. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy down here, and I'm going to move the decimal point one spot over. So now I've got 338.29 times 10. Right? I'm carrying down this times 10 here. Are those two the same? And the answer is no, because I move the decimal. I need to multiply it by 10 again. And so I get 38.29 times 10 is 382.9 times 10 is 3,829. So you can see I'm not changing the number. I'm just changing how I'm writing it. I'm going to do it again. 3.829, copy down these tens here. But that's not the same. I moved that decimal point again, so I need to add another 10 there. And I've got 3.829 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is the same thing as 3,829. Now, a shorthand for 10 times 10 times 10 is 10 to the third. And so I get. 3.829 times 10 to the third as my way of writing 3,829 in scientific notation. So those two are equivalent. Now, like I said, we don't have to go through every time and do the move it one, multiply by 10, move it one, add a 10, move it one, add a 10. We can just count how many times we moved it. So if I write the number uh, 46,300, what I can do is I can just move the decimal point over and count how many times I move it. And that count becomes my exponent. So let's see here. I'm going to move it over one, two, three, four spots. And that gives me 4.63. And since I moved it over four spots, I'm going to write times 10 to the fourth. 
then those two ways of writing 46,300 are entirely equivalent. I didn't change the number at all, I just changed how I wrote it, and that's what we do when we do scientific notation. We just changed how we wrote our numbers. You might have the question, why do I take this number to 4.63? Why not 46.3 or 0.463? Because in general, I said the best range for your coefficient or your mantissa is between 1 and 10. So when we're converting things to what we call proper scientific notation, we're going to try to convert that coefficient to some number between 1 and 10. So let's do another example. Let's do 18 million. 18 million, how am I going to convert that into scientific notation? I start with my decimal over here and I start counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I get 1.8, right, because I move the decimal point there, and then times 10 to the seventh because I move the decimal point over seven times. We'll do one more example. We'll do 457,000 3.82. Okay, so let's say we had all those digits there. What would we do in case we've got some digits after the decimal there? We don't worry about them. We're going to keep them on. And I'm going to count how many times I have to move it over. 3, 4, 5. And I get 4.5700382. You might be like, well, why did you write so many numbers here and you didn't write so many numbers here? We'll get to that later on in this section, but not in this video. So it's 4.70382 times 10 to the, how many times did I move it? 3, 4, 5 times 10 to the fifth. And those are two equivalent ways of writing that number. So that's how we take big numbers, numbers greater than 1, and write them in scientific notation. We move the decimal point over to get a number between 1 and 10 for our coefficient, and we count how many times we moved it, and that becomes our exponent. So what do you think we do for small numbers? If we got a number less than 1, so I'm going to take 0.03829, and I want to convert that to use scientific notation. We're going to do it the long way first, and then we're going to do it the short way. The long way, I'm going to move it over to the right. Why over to the right? Why not to the left? Well, because if I move it to the left, I'm just going to get a smaller and smaller number, and I'm not going to get that coefficient between 1 and 10 that I want to do. So now what do I have? I have 0 0.3829. Are those numbers equivalent? No, right? 0 0.03829 is smaller than 0 0.3829. So I've got to divide by 10 if I want those numbers to be equal. You can check that in your calculator if you want. 0 0.3829 divided by 10 is 0 0.03829. But remember, I want this coefficient to be between 1 and 10. So I'm going to go ahead and move that over a second time, and I get 3.829. This is my first divide by 10, but then I need to divide by 10 again. Check that in your calculator if you want. If you take 3.829, divide by 10, divide by 10, you should get 0.03829. Well, these two divide by 10s, I can also write like this. Hopefully you understand, right, since I'm dividing both of those, I can put those both in the denominator at once there. 3.829 times 10 times 10, which is 3.829 times divided by 10 to the second. And you remember there was a way of expressing that we're dividing by 10 to some power. And that was by saying 10 to the minus 2. And so we end up by saying 3.829 times 10 to the minus 2 is the same thing as 0 0.038. Two, nine, and that's how we write it in scientific notation. So we ended up moving the decimal point over two times, and then we had a coefficient of minus two. So it's actually very similar to what we did in the large number case, except we're moving it in the opposite direction. So let's look at another couple examples. What if we have 0 .0000104? <coughs> what are we going to do? We're going to move the decimal point until we get a number between 1 and 10, count how many times we moved it, and make that our negative exponent. Remember, the negative exponent doesn't tell us we have a negative number. It just tells us that we, move, we have, are dividing by 10 a few times. 
So what do we do? We take 1.04 times 10, and how many times do we move it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10 to the minus 5. You should get in the habit of being able to recognize small numbers and large numbers just by looking at their exponent in scientific notation. 10 to the minus fifth. When you see that minus 5, you should be thinking right away, that's some small number. The minus 5 says I'm going to divide by 10 five times. That gives me a small number. But if you see 10 to the positive 7 somewhere, you should look and think, hey, that's going to be a big number because I'm going to multiply that number by 10 a bunch of times. So it's really good to be able to get to the point where you can just look at a number and kind of have a sense it's a small number, it's a big number. It'll help us as we are going through. So we'll do one more example. 0 0.00000921. What are we going to do? We're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we get 9.21 times 10 to the minus 8 as writing that in scientific notation. So for numbers bigger than 1, you're going to get a positive exponent. For numbers less than 1, you're going to get a negative exponent. So here's some chances to practice writing numbers in scientific notation. I encourage you to pause the video, write these down on a piece of paper, try to write them in scientific notation, and then check your work when you continue. You did it? Come on, just do it. I know, it takes a few extra minutes. Just do it, it'll help you. Okay, so what do we do? We move the decimal point one, two, three, and we get 3.8525 times 10 to the third. Two spaces, 4.86 times 10 to the second. Here we've got a small number. Small number means negative exponent. We moved it three spots, it's gonna be 9.982 times 10 to the minus third, because we moved it three spots. Here we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We get 1.5 times 10 to the seventh. We didn't put any of those zeros in, but what's gonna be funny here is I'm gonna put some zeros in this one. 1, 2, 3, we get 2.000 times 10 to the minus third. Now, why did I put those zeros in, but no zeros up here? Something called significant figures, which we're going to get to in our next video. But don't worry about it for now. Just trust me that that's how we do it. Here's your turn. Which number is bigger just by looking at it? Don't put it into a calculator. Don't try to convert it. Just look at it. Hopefully you saw negative exponent, small number, positive exponent, big number, and a big number is going to be bigger than a small number, and we get something like that. Okay, how about these numbers? Which one's bigger just by looking at it? Okay, hopefully you looked at this 10 to the minus 6 and you said, hey, I'm going to divide that by 10 six times. Here I'm only going to divide by 10 five times. So this number is going to be smaller because I'm dividing by 10 more times, and this number is going to be bigger I'm dividing by 10 less times. So the answer here is B is the bigger number. Okay, let's try to write this number in scientific notation, 0 0.00930. Your turn to try. All right. What did you come up with? 9.30 times 10 to the minus 1, 2, 3. Don't worry too much about whether or not you got that extra zero in there. Uh, it turns out that I only gave you one option that had the correct exponent, so you're good. We're going to talk about that zero later on. But 10 to the minus 3 is what we get. Negative exponents mean small numbers. How about your calculator? What does your calculator think of scientific notation? Chances are, if you've got a calculator that can do a few things, it can also do scientific notation. In fact, for this class, you should have a calculator that can do scientific notation because we're going to deal with some very large and some very small numbers in this class. So if your calculator can't do it, then you're going to have a really hard time. I'm going to be showing you how to use the one on the left there, the TI calculator, but we'll talk a little bit about how to use some other calculators. They all have built-in functions for doing scientific notation. On the TI, it's a little hidden. It's right above the x to the minus 1 key on this one. You can't read that very well, but it says EE, -E, capital E, capital E. 
different from this guy, which is a lowercase e to the x. You definitely don't want to use that one when you're trying to do scientific notation. You want to use this one. On other calculators, like a Casio, you might see this key here that says exp, or even on a fancier one, it actually reads what it's supposed to, which is times 10, times 10 to the, and that tells you that you're going to be using scientific notation. But let's go back to the TI calculator over here. How are we going to use it? Well, the temptation when you see 3.35 times 10 to the third is to type it in your calculator just like that. So we go over to our calculator and we type in, hey, 3.35, and you type the times key, and you type 10, and then you figure out how to use the power key here, which is this little caret key, and you press the caret key, and you type 3, and that works great. That actually gets the answer that we want, which is 3,350. You can see it on the calculator right there. Um, but unfortunately, what it also does is it makes it not work very well when we are doing things that involve dividing by numbers with scientific notation. And so this is actually not the best thing for us to be doing. So let me go ahead and show you how you want to be entering that into your calculator. You want to enter that into your calculator not by pressing the um, times key and then the 10 to the, 10 to the power key, but by using that built-in scientific notation, this EE that I have over here on the left calculator. And so what I'm actually going to type in is 3.35 E. Now, funny thing on the TI calculators, even though you press a button that says EE, when you see it on the calculator, it only shows the E. But that E means 10 to the something. Actually, let me read even better is times 10 to the something. That's what that E means. So it already has the times in it. That's very important. It already has the times in it, already has the 10 in it, and already has the power in it. What I'm going to put in my calculator is 3.5 E3. So I'll show you that here. We're going to put 3.35. On the TI calculator, in order to get this E here, I have to hit the blue second key. And then I get the E, and you can see that it put an E there, capital, a little capital E, and then I put the exponent up there. So I now have 3.35 E3, and I hit enter, and it also says 3,350, which is what it is. What you also don't want to do is 3.35 times E3. This is not good. It will still give you the correct answer of 3,350, but it won't work when we're dividing numbers using scientific notation later. So please practice with your calculator. Make sure you're using the built-in scientific notation correctly. If you can't figure it out, find me somehow, and we will work on it together until you can know how to use it correctly. What you don't want to be doing is doing it wrong for most of the class, where it doesn't matter so much right now, and then getting to the sections where it does matter, where you do get start getting some wrong answers and have to fix how you're doing it. It's harder to do. It's better to learn it now correctly than it is to try to fix doing it later. So that's what we got using scientific notation on our calculator. Now, why do you want to use that? Like I said, when you're dividing numbers, you're going to get the wrong answer if you do it incorrectly. So this is a good thing to try typing. Try typing into your calculator and using the built-in scientific notation, 1 times 10 to the 2 divided by 1 times 10 to the 2. I wrote it here with the double e's, but how it'll appear on your calculator is something like this, 1e2 divided by 1e2. If you put that in your calculator correctly and you press enter, you should get the answer of 1. And I encourage you to get out your calculator and try it. But if you use the times key and you put that into your calculator, what you're going to get is an answer of 10,000. Now, why do you get an answer of 10,000 when you put it in using the times key and the power key, but an answer of 1 when you put it in using the built-in scientific notation? Because when you use the built-in scientific notation, your calculator does the order of operations correctly. It prioritizes the scientific notation and treats this 1e2 as a number. And it treats 1e2 as a number. But when you use multiplying and dividing, it does order of operations in the order you did it. It says take 1, 
multiply by 10 squared. 10 squared takes precedence, so you now got 100. So we're going to multiply 1 times 100. And then we're going to divide by 1. 1 times 100 divided by 1, that's 100. And then we're going to do our next thing, which is times 10 to the 2. 10 to the 2 takes precedence. We get 100. And we get 100 times 100, which is 10,000. And so that's what your calculator is doing. It's doing it in the wrong order. And you can get numbers that are very, very wrong. So use your built-in scientific notation. I'm going to say that like a few thousand times, so get used to it. What if we have scientific notation? We want to convert that back to a regular decimal number. So we've got 3.35 times 10 to the third, and we want to know what that number is. Well, you, you know, here we just typed it in our calculator, and our calculator told us the correct answer. But sometimes even our calculator won't quite get it right. So let's practice. Let's take our 3.372 times 10 to the minus third. Here I've got it in units of centimeters. Now when we're converting just from a number from decimal to scientific notation, or scientific notation to decimal, it does not change our units. In order to change our units, we have to do a unit conversion, which we'll get to later on in this chapter. So what do we do? Well, we do what it tells us. It says times 10 to the minus third, and hopefully, bing, in your head popped. That's a small number. Negative exponents are small numbers. So it's telling us to divide this number by 10 three times. But the nice way of dividing by 10 is just moving the decimal point over. So I'm going to write my coefficient down here, 3.372, and I'm just going to move the decimal point over three spots. One, two, three, and now I'm going to move my decimal point over to here. Turns out you can't have holes. We can't have blank spots where numbers should be but aren't, and so we fill those in with zeros and end up with 0.003372. And that is what 3.372 times 10 to the minus third is in scientific notation. Now on all of these, I should keep my units and have centimeters on all of them. I changed the number, but I didn't change the units. Units never change unless I explicitly do a unit conversion. One other thing I'm going to point out here is that all numbers less than 1 should have a leading zero in front of the decimal point. For numbers like this, it's unlikely someone's going to notice it. But if I have a number like 732, and let's put meters after it, and you look at that number and I say, well, what is that number? You say, well, it's 732 meters. But let me blow it up really, really big here, and you'll notice that I did draw a very small decimal point there. And you missed the decimal point because it was really small. I was in a hurry when I was writing, and you just didn't see it. But if I write 0 0.732, most of you will look at that number and pause. You're like, well, why did he put a 0 in front of there? That's an odd thing to do. And you'll look for the decimal point. So writing that leading 0 is a guarantee, essentially, that someone will read your number correctly when it's less than 1. So I want you to practice that in this class. You're not going to write. 0 0.0050, you're going to write 0 0.0050. Always having that leading zero before a decimal point when you've got a number less than one. Let's do another example of converting from scientific notation to decimal. We'll do 1.49 times 10 to the minus fifth. And let's put some units on it again, liters. 1.49 times 10 to the minus fifth liters. The 10 to the minus 5, you should look at that and be like, oh, I know that's going to be a small number. I'm going to move over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right here. And I'm going to put some zeros in all of these spots. And so what I end up with is a 0 0.0000. Right? Those four zeros go after the decimal. That leading 0 is not here. It's not coming from there. It's not coming from what I just did. It's just because. It looks nicer and it's easier to interpret when you have that leading zero. So 0 0.0000149. And these have units of liters because I didn't convert my units. There was no unit conversion done. So I have the same units as when I started. So that's how we convert numbers from scientific notation into decimal when they're small. What about when they're large? Well, it's the exact same thing. We just do what it tells us. So if we've got. Um, uh, 4.95 times 10 to the fourth. That 10 to the fourth should immediately tell you, bing, positive exponent, big number. If it's a big number, which way am I going to move the decimal? 
I'm going to move the decimal to make the number bigger. And so I take my 4.95, and I'm going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way over to here. I can't have missing numbers, so I put some zeros in there, and I get 49500. Zero, zero. It's tempting to write the decimal there, but don't do that for now. We'll learn how to know when to put the decimal and where to put the decimal coming up. But for now, let's leave it off and we just say, hey, that 4.95 times 10 to the fourth is the same thing as 49,500. So that's how we do it for positive exponents or large numbers. Here's a chance for you to practice. We're going to take each of these, write them in regular decimal notation, not in scientific notation. So pause the video, write those down, try them out. I'm watching you. Okay. 9.27 times 10 to the fourth, it's a big number. So I'm going to take my 9.27, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. I've got that 92,700 as my answer. 46 times 10 to the minus fourth, you're like, hey, 46, I can't have 46. Didn't you say those coefficients had to be between 1 and 10? I said for proper scientific notation, they're between 1 and 10. But there's good reason sometimes when people do it, not irregularly where the number is not between 1 and 10. It's not bad. It's just not what we call proper scientific notation. And just be aware, if I ask you for proper scientific notation in this class, you better have a coefficient between 1 and 10. But we're just going to write our starting number there. And we're going to move that decimal point. There's none written, which means it's right after. One, two, three, four spots. Why did I move it to the left? Because I had a negative exponent, which told me I had a small number. I want to make this number very, very small. So I end up with 0 0.0046 is 46 times 10 to the minus 4th. How about the next one? 835.2 times 10 to the minus 2. Small number. 1, 2. 8.352. Okay. What people sometimes do is they're just in a hurry and they write times 10 to the minus 2. And they're like, no, no, no. We just took care of the 10 to the minus 2 by moving that decimal point over, so we don't want to worry about it. Okay. 1.000 times 10 to the fifth. This is the trick one. It's actually impossible to write this number as a decimal. And we'll see why when we get to the next section on significant figures. If I take my 1.000, I try to move it over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I take some other zeros there, I get 100,000. It turns out that this number and this number, although mathematically they're the same number, are not scientifically the same number. It was a trick one. I just wanted to show you that there's other weird things that happen to our numbers. This is not normal. This is not what you normally think. You're like, hey, Professor Clements, 100,000 and 1.0, I mean, we just converted. They're the same number, Professor Clements. And they are, but they're also not. And we'll see that moving forward. So you had a chance to practice converting numbers from scientific notation to decimal. Your turn. We're going to take 4.27 times 10 to the fourth. And what is that in decimal notation? Pause, answer it. And you're back, which means you did it. Hopefully, you took your 4.27 times 10 to the fourth and you said 1, 2, 3, 4. And you got 42,700. 0. 0.000440 in scientific notation. And I actually made a mistake here. Oh, no, I made it right. So what are we going to do? Well, well like you're going to try it first. I was getting ahead of myself. You're going to try it first. All right, now what are we going to do? 0 0.000440. I want to write that. I didn't write enough zeros. That's an important thing. Double check your work. I originally wrote down three zeros, but I looked at it. I said, the, the numbers don't look the same to me. Let me check. And even while I was talking, I counted those numbers and was like, oh, I left off a zero happens all the time, even to people who do this kind of stuff all the time, even to people like me who have the answers, who made up the problem. Do I still leave off a zero sometimes? Absolutely. Do I add an extra zero sometimes? Absolutely. And I've learned to check my work as I go. I've learned to look and be like, does this number make sense? Does it match what I had before? And those are good things to practice. You can't practice never making a mistake, but you can practice recovering from your mistakes gracefully. All right, what are we going to do? One, two, three, four, five. And so we get 4.40 times 10 to the minus 5, which is this one here. And again, there's that funny, why do we keep that 0 and not other ones? And we'll get to that.
So we have this new order of operations. Scientific notation changes how we do things. We still do parentheses first, but the next order of operation, the next most um, high precedence thing is to do scientific notation. So <coughs> everything else looks the same in there. So if we take 0 0.0039 divided by 4.3 times 10 to the minus third, which way are we going to interpret it? Are we going to interpret it as the 4.3 times 10 to the minus thirds on the bottom? Or are we going to divide by 4.3 and then multiply by 10 to the minus third? And the answer is this first one. The scientific notation, when you have the times 10 to the something, that's one number. You keep it together. You never split it apart because that's just a way of representing a single number. It's not really representing a multiplication. It's representing a single number. So make sure that you are using the proper precedent for scientific notation. It has precedence over powers and exponents, multiplication, division, and addition, and subtraction. All right, that is our introduction to scientific notation, writing numbers in scientific notation, writing scientific notation as regular numbers, and also why do we care why we're doing this. And the whole point is to get that number between 1 and 10 that we can visualize really easily. Ah, so it's 7. I have 7 of those. And then an exponent says, well, I've got seven of those, and I'm going to multiply that by a million. So I have seven million. But you can't picture seven million, but you can picture seven, and you can think about multiplying by a million. And that's kind of the point of the scientific notation. Hope this helps. Thanks.